Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Ravnica Allegiance Draft here on the channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome, welcome, welcome. Before I begin, I do want to remind you that if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. It really does help me out a ton, and if the video gets to 50 thumbs up, 5-0, I will be doing an in-depth draft analysis of this draft. So if you want to see that or you want to support the channel or both, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Another way you can support the channel is by hitting that subscribe button. It'll give you updates whenever I post new content. I really do appreciate each and every one of my subscribers. Currently, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, a huge milestone. So everyone that helps me with that uh, is greatly appreciated. And finally, if you have any questions or comments about the draft or the gameplay, be sure to leave those in the comment section down below, and I will gladly respond with my thoughts or answers. But without further ado, let's get into the draft. Hello, hello, and welcome to the drafting portion. Uh, let's dive right in. Okie doke, Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Uh, two mana, one, two, so pretty much it fails the vanilla test off the bat. Um, but let's double check. I'm pretty sure I know what the ability does, but I'm not 100%. Sacrifice two other creatures. Any, num each, any number of target players each lose two life and sacrifice a creature. You add two black and draw a card. So... I think this card's pretty mediocre, very hard to set up, and uh, overall not a super powerful effect. There's not really a ton of uh, payoffs for sacrifices stuff, uh, so I don't think I'm going to take that. Galloping Lizrog is a card that's just kind of a slow finisher for Simic. Uh, not really what Simic needs, because Simic already has decent late game. Swings of the Guild Pack. Seven drops are just too expensive to run in normal limited decks. Maybe there's a ramp deck I would run this in, but overall not super great. Uh, Senate Guild Mage right now is going to be my pick. I was very impressed with this card when I got to play with it at Friday Night Magic. Uh, the Gain 2 Life ability is really relevant, like surprisingly relevant, and uh, looting is really nice. After that, Sedro Savant is pretty nice, R Rakdos Roustabout is also nice, and Skitter Eel uh, is also pretty strong. Those are three cards that come to mind. Uh, we are once again going to be using the uh, five-pick method, uh, so-called, because for the first five picks, you try to ignore... Uh, all criteria that you would normally use in a non-guild draft format, like trying to stick to one color, trying to avoid gold cards early, and uh, things of that nature. So basically, I'm just going to try and take the most powerful card out of the pack, regardless of what I've already taken. In this pack, Rakdos Firewheeler is much better than the next best card. Uh, this card is incredible. I mean, Skewer the Critics is also quite strong, uh, but this is the classic case of the five-pick method, because Senate Guild Mage is a white-blue card, and Rakdos, and also it's like a gold card, so like Typically, you're like, I don't necessarily want to take a gold card first because it uh, restricts my options. But because you're playing a guild set where you're heavily incentivized to play one of five color combinations instead of ten color combinations, restricting yourself is much less uh, hurtful, and it uh, finding the open colors is super important. So here I'm going to take the Rakdos Firewheeler over the Skewer the Critics. Skewer might be more flexible, but Rakdos Firewheeler is quite powerful. So I think in this pack I go Rakdos Firewheeler, Skewer the Critics, and then Slime Bind. I actually really do like Slime Bind, and then maybe Burning Tree Vandal. Uh, but I'm not. I'm a little bit less sure after that. Okie doke. So moving on to the next pick, uh, Gateway Sneak is a card that I have been very impressed by. Also, keep in mind that just because we saw this card, it doesn't mean Rakdos is open. Uh, the rare in that pack was missing, and that rare could have been anything. It could have been a great red rare. It could have been a great black rare. It also could have been a good uh, blue or white rare. So you really, it's that early on. You can't really view this card as a super big signal, though. Uh, it is quite strong and better than a lot of the rares. Uh, Gateway Sneak is a card that is really annoying to play against. If you play this card and then they they like get a hit with through with it, it feels like you've kind of like lost the game, which is really a frustrating card to play against. Uh, Gatebreaker Ram is a little bit more of a build around than Gateway Sneak. I think Gateway Sneak is more powerful individually than Gatebreaker Ram. Uh, that being said, in the Gates deck, I'm not sure which one I would rather have. Gatebreaker Ram might just be a little bit better in the dedicated Gates deck. Senate Griffin is a card that's really impressed me in white decks, in blue decks, and in Azorius decks. Um, here, I think I am going to take the Gateway Sneak. I think it's just the best card in the pack. Uh, still a little bit too early to see what's open. Uh, Senate Griffin could be a little bit of a signal. This card does go well with my first pick. Um, but overall, not committing to anything just yet. Okay, Sky Tether is a card that I do like in Azorius. Um, uh, I actually got a chance to play an Azorius deck at my Friday Night Magic. And, uh, I didn't have a Sky Tether, but the deck played out as a Flyers Tempo deck, which is kind of what I expected Azorius to be, and I think Sky Tether is just a pretty nice card in a uh, deck filled with Flyers that can win the late game. Uh, there's also a couple of Gates. Maybe we are looking to transfer into a more Gate-heavy deck. We did see a couple of Gate payoffs, but the real payoffs for the Gate deck, I think, are the Gates Ablaze and the Gatekeeper Colossus, and I think that if you don't see one of those early, then you don't necessarily want to move into the Gates deck. Here, I think that Sky Tether is the most powerful card in the pack, just a nice removal effect. 
Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean we're committed to Azorius. We could still move out if we saw some more Rakdos cards or m more powerful cards. But about five picks in is usually when you tend to get a signal. That's why I call it the five pick method. Uh, Gateway Plaza is a nice card for Gates decks, but we aren't going to like prioritize Gates too highly with Gateway Sneak. Um, it is a nice card to have several Gates with, and I've actually cons I've actually played off color Gates uh, with Gateway Sneak, like not off color completely, but like I'll play I played like a Simic Guild Gate before with Gateway Sneak in my deck. And uh, that is a type of thing that can work effect be a pretty effective. Okay, so in this pack, uh, Rally to Battle is an interesting effect. I don't think this card is super strong. It's kind of a neat combo with High Alert, but the decks that win with High Alert are usually doing pretty well if they have a High Alert in play anyway. Um, this card really wrecked me one time because I had a Chillbringer. So it like I Chillbringer then made an attack, and so I was tapped out before combat, so they really got me. Um, but I don't think the card's effective overall. Four mana for this type of effect is too much, and it's really easy to play around. I think the best card in this pack is Rakdos Roustabout. Um, and I think I might take it over the gate, um, just to keep my options open. We still aren't a hundred percent sure that, uh, Azorius is open and gates are relatively disposable, even though we have a gateway sneak, we don't want to commit too heavily and then, uh, end up unable to switch into Rakdos if Rakdos turns out to be more open. And, uh, I think that the opportunity cost there is quite low because while having more gates for gateway sneak is nice, uh, a lot of decks don't want to run too many gates anyway, like, because if you have more than like three or so gates, then you end up uh, suffering because your mana base comes into tapped too often. So like if you like more than four gates, you don't really want to run anyway unless you have more specific payoffs. And also I can run like gates that have like one of my colors to trigger the gateway sneak. Uh, in this pack, Consigned to the Pit is a card that has been decent for me, but that was in a controlling deck. I think Sphinx's Insight is a bit of a trap. It's just a little bit too expensive for what it does. Uh, Collision is a fine sideboard card for this deck. It's also a really good main deck card in Grohl. Uh, I think I'm just going to take the Consigned to the Pit. Before I know my colors, I'm much less likely to take guild gates and more likely to take cards that can help me figure out what colors I'm going to be. Um, so as it is, um, this draft is like shaping up pretty interestingly. Uh, it looks like I'm either going to be Azorius or Rakdos. We aren't 100% sure either way. I do like Arrestor's Zeal. It really works nicely with Gateway Sneak because you can get in. Uh, it is also just a fine card uh, when you're like a beat down aggressive deck. Doesn't work super well with Prowling Caracol, which is a pretty nice two drop, I think, when you're being a, a beatdown deck, but because the one toughness means it'll still trade with multiple cards, but um, Slime Bind's the card that I think is a little bit more effective than Arrestor's Zeal anyway, so I think I'm just going to take the Slime Bind here. Uh, Blade Brand is not a card I'm super high on, uh, though it's definitely a card that you can play. Here, there's a choice between a Slime Bind and the Zorius Guildgate. Um, it's looking at this point. Like the uh, blue deck is a little, the blue white deck is more open than the Rakdos deck. That was kind of my thought early on, but I don't want to um, overcommit too soon. Uh, so here I think it's kind of close because of this gateway sneak, but I still think I'm just going to take the slime bind. Um, I don't have any flyers yet, but blue white uh, thrives with flyers, and uh, so I'll probably be prioritizing those super highly. And slime bind is a great way to shut down uh, annoying ground creatures that can be a little bit pesky sometimes. Uh, I think Rubble Pelt Runner is the best card in that pack, but I haven't really seen a ton of... Oh, why did it take that card? I guess I didn't click the Slime Bind. That's a little bit unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Wow, that's uh, really bad. Sorry, guys. I think I might have like hovered over the card, but yeah, that's unfortunate. So uh, that should be a Slime Bind in this pick. Uh, anyway, not a super big deal. Slime Bind is like a card that you don't want too many copies of anyway because it can get repetitive. Um, here is between Roustabout and Skitter Eel. I think I'm going to take the, hmm. I still think I'm just going to take the Roustabout. I'm going to leave myself open to playing Rakdos, um, especially because, I mean, I'm not 100% sure like what I'll open pack two. This is a spot you can find yourself in where you're choosing between two guilds. Here, at this point, I only have enough playables to play either Rakdos or uh, Blue White uh, Azorius, but uh, I think I'm just going to take the Burning Tree Vandal. I think that card's going to be pretty nice for me. I could take a Plague White. Hmm. I think I'll take a Plague White. I need more 2-drops. I already have a couple 3s. And uh, get a little bit rewarded. I can take another Plague White, or I can just take a strong 3. Now I'll take a Burning Tree Vandal. Take the Thought Collapse, the only real card in my colors. I mean, I, I'm willing to play a Thought Collapse. I'll play Watchful Giant sometimes, but I'd much rather just play a Thought Collapse. Uh, or Zav Lock, it could be a card that helps me splash, potentially, but I kind of like having access to a Thought Collapse. And now, between Dead Revels and Azorius Guildgate... It's looking relatively likely that I play uh, Rakdos, so I'll just take this over the gate. And now 
I'll just take the face. Maybe I'll play against a deck with some big defenders. And Prowling Karak all last. Could be a little bit of a signal. So at this point, it looks like I'm playing Rakdos, which is kind of interesting because I thought I was going to be playing uh, Azorius. I was getting like some decent Azorius signals, and we're more of a mid-rangey Rakdos. We did take a Plague Rite over a Burning Tree Vandal, that, but that was because we didn't have any two drops, and it is important still to have some two drops. Um, but I'm still relatively happy with where we are at right now. Um, Ill-Gotten Inheritance is a card I want to talk about. I think a lot of people, uh, at least when I played at Friday Night Magic, I got the impression that a lot of people thought this card was super great, and I really don't think it's uh, playable even in draft. It's just too slow. Uh, in board stalls, you'd rather be winning with flyers or something of that nature, and uh, I think this card is just not good in draft. And um, I encourage you to uh, not play it. And if you do want to play it, just think about whether uh, when you, whenever you draw Ill-God Inheritance, think about it compared to like a 4-mana 3-4 or whatever card you would, would have taken over it. Uh, Scorch Mark here, some like mediocre removal. Uh, I don't really have any gates, so Plaza of Harmony doesn't do a ton for me. Burning Tree Vandal is fine, but nothing impressive. I'm not really looking to splash in my Rakdos deck. I don't really have the fixing to support that right now. So it's looking like Scorch Mark is the pick. Um, there is a summary judgment for if I wanted to go the... Uh, the uh, Azorius root, but I think I like kind of having a scorch mark. It's just kind of a nice piece of removal. It's like kind of kind of mediocre, but like still relatively like effective in a lot of cases. Okie doke. So here, Immolation Shaman, a card that I've gotten to play with. It's pretty decent effect. I uh, was relatively impressed with it when I did get to play it. Tithe Taker is a really nice card, though. If I was going to be playing Azorius, however. Keep in mind that of the Azorius cards I saw that were good, like that are like actively uh, pulling me towards Azorius, they were my first pick and my third pick because I went this card and then Rakdos Firewheeler second and then Gateway Sneak. So the only like two, and then I got I guess I got a Sky Tether, which could just be me valuing Sky Tether more than other people. So uh, keep that in mind that the good Azorius cards I saw were like early picks and the good Rakdos cards, I saw some pretty decent Rakdos cards like Rakdos Roust about a bit later in the draft. So here we're going to be taking the Immolation Shaman. It's just a really nice two-drop. I'm going to make sure I click it, and I'm just going to drag it in before things get 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 burn bright, burn brighted. Basically, uh, that little misclick. Tie Taker is a really nice two-drop, though. But I think Immolation Shaman is going to be uh, work better with the colors that I saw pack one. Okay, Blade Brand could be part of a uh, like little bit of a combo. There's uh, multiple cards in Rakdos that this is a kind of neat combo with. Uh, the card that uh, is like a 1 mana 1 1 that dies and pings something works decently well with Blade Brand. You attack them, and then you get to like ping something and kill it, which is pretty effective. Um, this is not a creature, so I'm not going to put it in the creature section. I'm just going to have my little creature curve over here and my spells over here, which is what something I like to do. I like to keep my removal there and my non removal spells there. Uh, Rakdos Roustabout is a really nice 3 drop. Uh, Rope Up Recluse is like not super great, but it's like mediocre. Frenzy Darynx is actually quite strong, but I didn't see a single good Gruel card last pack, so I don't think I'm going to take it here. And then Rakdos Trumpeter is not super powerful either. Um, it's just like a mediocre two-drop uh, that you can use to trigger Spectacle sometimes. Here, though, I think I'm just going to take the Roustabout. Uh, Font of Agonies, you're not going to be able to trigger this consistently enough to want it, so I'm just going to take the Roustabout here. It's just a fine three-drop. It trades, gets in a little bit of damage, and is overall just decently effective. Um, here between Carry On Imp and Burning Tree Vandal, these are the only two cards in my colors. I'm not really looking to splash white, so I'm not like considering the Guild Gate. There is a summary judgment if I wanted to move back to blue white, but a lot of the times when you are trying to figure out the open guild, uh, pack one, you kind of figure it out, and then pack two, you just stick with the one you chose pack one. Because uh, I think Rakdos was more open pack one, uh, and the problem with switching back to Azori's pack two is that then I see Rakdos again pack three. So here, I think I'm going to take the Carry On Imp. It gives me a little bit more flexibility. It gives me a flyer, which can be useful in certain matchups. And also, I already have a lot of uh, four, three drops already, and I might even see another one that's decent. So I'm just going to take the Carry On Imp here. And gets a little bit, getting a little bit rewarded here. There's two Rakdos Guild Gates. Maybe one of those will come back. Not really looking for the Rumbling Ruin, but Colt Guild Mage is pretty much exactly what Rakdos wants. It's just an excellent card for Rakdos. Very happy to see that. All of my two drops, like these two two drops, I have two like pretty strong two drops and then Plague White, which is not like super strong, but um, it can like get the job done and uh, I might not even have to play it. And then there's a couple gates. I don't really have a ton of gate payoffs here, but I do want to have a couple so that my Rakdos Firewheeler can come down consistently. My Roustabouts can come down consistently. So if I could get two gates, I'd be pretty happy with that. 
Uh, that being said, there aren't really any other cards to consider in this pack. Gore Clan Wrecker is a fine card, but nothing exceptional. But the Colt Guild Mage is quite nice. Uh, speaking of like non cards that I'm not playing, but I think Sidershire's Volley is a really nice sideboard card uh, for green decks. So I think you really kind of want one in your sideboard. But I'm obviously not green, so yeah, I'm not going to take it. Ooh, my goodness, this is quite a pack. Uh, Growth Chamber Guardian is like really good and limited. Starform Hybrid, I think I was a little bit too high on it, but it's also quite nice. Savage Smash is quite strong. Maybe the guy to my right is Grohl. Like, I didn't see any Grohl pack one, and that would, like, give me, like, some signals of Rakdos because I saw a lot of, like, good gold Rakdos cards. This is actually really tough. Hackerbat is really, like, a really strong card because it can trade up every time. It can also, like, just punch through three damage if they don't want to block. Skewer the Critics is really good as well, though. It works really nicely with the Roustabouts I have. I'm Here I'm easily picking between the Skewer the Critics and the Hackerbat. Roustabout isn't really a consideration. I think I'm just going to take the Hackrobat. I think Hackrobat's going to be really nice. A lot of the time, it's good to prioritize good creatures over good removal uh, because in an aggressive deck because you want to be able to uh, like kill the opponent before and like not get a hand stuck full of removal spells. Uh, get the point versus Skewer the Critics is actually really close for me. Uh, I think I'm going to take the skewer of the critics because I already have like one expensive piece of removal that's unconditional. But at least this direction, Rakdos is looking really pretty open, so that, that's nice. I could have had like back to back skewers. I'm not sure which one is better between skewer and hackerbat. Hackerbat's honestly a card I haven't had a ton of experience with, but it's quite a nice card. So I'm just going to take the skewer here because I can oftentimes cast it for one thanks to my roustabouts. Uh, get the point is a really nice card, but I'm just going to snag this skewer. And then easy Rakdos Guildgate. Not a huge fan of the Rafter Demon. Spectacling it out is too expensive, and casting it just base is really bad. Uh, after the Rakdos Gilgit, I'd probably just take the Gravel Hide Goblin. Uh, late and get enraged Saratok, but I'm going to assume the guy to my right is playing green, as I didn't get a single good green card pack one. Um, but easy Rakdos Gilgate for me here. And now I can maybe... I can. I don't really want to pl pl play Spike Wheel Acrobat. I think I'm just going to take Burning Tree Vandal. Maybe I should take Plaza of Harmony. Um, and I'll get a couple more gates, but um, yeah, I think Burning Tree Vandal is just probably a little bit better. Helps me not flood out too heavily. Undercity Scavenger could be a nice sideboard card against decks that run enchantment removal, like slime binds and stuff. Uh, so I think I'm going to take that over a debtor's transport. Six mana for this effect is just a little bit too expensive. If it cost five, it would be a good card, I think. But uh, six mana is just a little bit too much. And then he, here I just want to fill out the lower part of my curve a little bit more. Uh, Rakdos Trumpet is not the greatest card, but it's definitely a relatively effective one. Uh, the fact that you can just chip in for some damage early when they don't have good blockers, and then uh, Threaten Menace later is also nice. I also want to maximize my creatures so that my Dead Revels is on a lot of the time. And Rebel Pelt Recluse is just like kind of a, an annoying card to use sometimes. Burning Tree Vandal number three. Yeah, I guess I'll take a Burn Bright. I don't really want to play it though. So Rakdos looked actually relatively open there. Savage Smash, Jesus. The late Savage Smash. So Skewer the Critics versus Hackerbat was probably the closest pick that pack. I think Hackerbat is really nice, though. Keep in mind that even though it's like you're thinking, well, how am I going to trigger Spectacle to cast it on turn two? Ooh, another Trumpeter. It's not a great card. Like I'm not super happy to have like be, if I have to play him, but... But, like, keep in mind, you can play, like, on turn three, hit him with your Roustabout, deal a damage, and then play Hack... I mean, on turn four, and then play Hackerbat and Rakdos Trumpeter, which is still a strong play. And, uh... Yeah, just keep that in mind. That you can, uh... Do stuff like that. Huh. Flames of the Raised Boar is really nice. Um, if you have four-powered creatures, which I don't really... Like, this guy can be four-power sometimes. This guy can be four-power. I mean, he is a four-power. But I don't really have a ton of four-powered guys. I mean, considering the Hackerbat versus Skewer pick, the Hackerbat's also like, I mean, the Skewer is also just like a really good removal spell, so it could just be that Skewer is correct, like every time, but hard to say. Hard to say. I'll need more experience playing with Hackerbat to say for certain. Tin Street Dodger, not a card that I'm super like happy to play here. It The only card it works like good with is Hackerbat, and I, so I'm not going to play a Tin Street Dodger in this deck. Act of Treason, not a super high priority for me. Another Consigned to the Pit isn't either. Here, I'm just going to take Flames with the Raised Boar. I need, don't need a mediocre 3-drop like these two guys. These are just medium 3-drops. 
the Flames of the Rays board can be game-winning, and if I can uh, get a couple more guys that can get up to four power, it can be really good. So I'm just going to take this card. It's another expensive removal spell, but sometimes you got to play expensive removal. Uh, Carnival Carnage is a card that I really like. Just cheap, cheap removal for certain creatures, and then the Carnage is just a really nice uh, value play in certain parts of the game. Cry of the Carnarium is a card that is really good against Orzhov, I think. It's not really a card I want to play because, look, it kills all of my three drops. It kills a decent number of my two drops. And it doesn't kill any of my three, four drops. But, I mean, this isn't a four drop. This is a three drop, technically. But I put it in the four drop to demonstrate a point earlier. Uh, Storm Strike could be decent in this deck because I have a lot of high power, low toughness creatures. And that's where that type of effect thrives. But I think I'm just going to take the Carnival uh, Carnage card. Undercities Embrace is a card I'm not super happy to play. It just, making them sacrifice creatures just generally isn't very good for three mana. Uh, because a lot of the time in the late game, they'll just sacrifice a 1-1 one, one or something really medium. But, yeah. Maybe Storm Strike will wheel. I think I would probably play it. I'm not a huge fan of the card overall, but I would probably play it. Okie doke, Grotesque Demise, another nice removal spell. That's another reason why uh, Skewer the Critics isn't as high of a pick for Rakdos, because Rakdos gets access to Grotesque Demise, Skewer the Critics, the five mana removal spell, get the point. Uh, Scorch Mark and Sign of the Pit. So it like Scorch Mark and Sign of the Pit and like aren't as good as Skewer the Critics, but like you'll have access to removal and having good creatures is important. That being said, Orzov Enforcer is quite nice. Um, hmm. So I have kind of like five removal spells already. Hmm. Orzov Enforcer is really good. Uh, I think Azorius Skyguard is a trap. I don't think you should play this card. It's just too expensive for what it does. Six mana for a 3-3. Three, three. It, it dies to Skewer. It dies to Grotesque Demise. It dies to them Savage Smashing. So it just dies to too much stuff to be a good card. This is actually a close pick between the Enforcer and the Gold Grotesque Demise. I think I'm just going to take the Grotesque Demise because I want more cheap removal. And that can help me like cut stuff like Consigned to the Pit. I think this deck is going to be able to run a pretty low land count because of my triple Burning Tree Vandals, which isn't like an insane card or anything, but it definitely can get the job done. <laughs> Cavalcade of Calamity, I have... So this is power one or less. Okay, so it doesn't work with toughness one or less. So it doesn't work with that. But it works with Immolation Shaman, Rakdos Trumpeters. I don't think the card's good, though. I'm just like looking to see if there's like synergy, but I don't think it's ever worth it to really play it. Unless you like get a, go deep on a Goblin Gathering deck and just decide like before pick one to go Goblin Gathering. Interesting to note, this is a pretty nice Azorius card, uh, but I think this Rakdos deck has been turning out pretty nicely. There's a couple good Azorius cards, but uh, Roused About or another Rakdos Trumpeter is actually interesting, but um, I think I'm just going to go with the Roused About. I think, it's, I think I already have a couple Trumpeters. I know Roused I already have three Roused Abouts, but Roused About is just one of those cards that gets like a little bit better in multiples even because it's just kind of hard to uh, like play around because they're just like three roustabouts in plays represents three automatic damage, so a little bit annoying. Uh, Play White, probably just going to be my pick here. I don't really need Rebel Pelt Recluse. It's pretty big, but uh, five mana, six five that has to attack is like not insane or anything, and it can definitely just get eaten by other things, which like like, like creatures, like they play Troll Bread Guardian, though that, to be fair, that is an uncommon. Absorb, so maybe... Azorius was more open this direction, I'm not sure. Maybe I want Dead Revels here over just a very replacement level 2 drop. That could just be better. I think, yeah, I'm going to take the Dead Revels because I have a lot of creatures and uh, I have a lot of ways to trigger uh, Spectacle. And Feral Maka, Plague White, one of those is going to come back, I think. So I kind of want to try Dead Revels. Scorch Mark or another Rakdos Trumpeter. I don't really want Glass of the Guild Pact, though. Multicolored creatures you control get plus one, plus one. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if seven creatures in my deck get plus one, plus one, I don't think that's worth a card slot, to be quite honest. I think I'm choosing between the Trumpeter and the Scorch Mark here. Spike Real Acrobat, not really a card I'm choosing between either. Because like a four mana five two is pretty bad, because it'll trade with most two drops, and a three mana five two isn't even like insane or anything. Glass of the Guild Pact is kind of interesting, but I'm just going to take the Scorch Mark here. Another like cheap removal effect. Another Rakdos Guildgate, pretty big pickup, to be quite honest. I really like having another one so that I can consistently cast Firewheeler on turn four. Another thing with Dead Revels is it gets better when you have, like, good cards like Firewheeler to get back, because you can get, like, good value from those. I'm going to be able to cut some of my less efficient removal spells, which is really nice here. 
Burning Tree Vandal, number three, or just a Rebel Pelt. I'll probably just take a Rebel Pelt at this point. It's good to have a nice Curved Hopper, and uh, three Burning Trees is probably a little bit, probably already enough. Three mana, three, two with this effect is pretty nice, and the Haste is a nice bonus, but... I'm not even really considering Ill-Gotten Inheritance. That's just way too slow for this type of deck. I guess I'll take it. Hmm. No, I'm just going to take the Burning Tree Vandal. Burning Tree Vandal also works really nicely with Dead Revels. So that's a nice bonus. And here I can take Active Trees and I can take Consigned to the Pit. I could just take a Tin Street Dodger. I think a lot of my turn fours are going to be pretty open. Uh, hmm. I don't really want another consigned to the pit. It's just a bit expensive. I'll take 10 Street Dodger. There might be certain matchups I want it. And now Storm Strike. That came back. I'm really happy to get Storm Strike. I'm going to take it over Blade Brand uh, because I think a lot of my turn fours are going to consist of attacking, them blocking, me Storm Striking, playing another three drop. So Storm Strike like, fills the four drop slot pretty nicely. And uh, Blade Brand, not really what I'm looking for. I'm going to have to make some cuts here, but this is definitely going to be able to be a 16 land deck. I have four Burning Tree Vandals. I can probably just cut Flames with a Raised Boar, too. It's not going to be good in this deck. It's much better in Grohl or if you have more big creatures. But I was, like, taking it over a Tin Street Dodger or something really medium. I think Dead Rebels is actually going to be quite nice in this deck. This deck is actually pretty strong, I think. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out, but I think it's pretty strong. I think it's better than the Azorius deck I would have had. Another Dead Revels, or a Rubble Pelt Recluse, or a 2-drop. I already have 5 2-drops, and I think I'll probably see some more Rakdos Trumpeters. I think 2 Dead Revels is the max you want to play, so I think I'm choosing between Plague White, Plague White and Rubble Pelt Recluse. I guess I'll pick the Plague White. It just really wrecks some decks. Got another Rakdos Trumpeter. I just don't think I need the 5 drop. I think my late game is going to consist of me just discarding my lands. Hey, I have the choice between all three of the cards I was considering out of that pack. I guess I'll take one Rebel Pelt Recluse. I already have enough 2 drops. I don't really need any more, so Rebel Pelt Recluse could be an effect that I would like in certain matchups. It's just really not a card I want to main deck because it can just get wrecked by them having like a death touch creature or something like that. But in certain matchups I could definitely see a 5 mana 6-5 just being a bit bigger than the stuff they can deal with. I think I'm going to main deck the Undercity Scavenger. I have Dead Rebels to get like the cards back and there's a decent amount of like enchantment based like removal and stuff. I guess I'll just take the uh, cheaper card. Slow people down. Don't think I'm going to play all four of these. I do think I'm going to play all four Rakdos Roustabouts, though. They do get pretty decent in multiples, and they help me trigger my Dead Rebels. I'm not going to play all of these two drops, either. Not a huge fan of the Trumpeter, to be quite honest. I think I'm going to have to play some number of it, but... Because um, I don't think it's, like, much... I think Plague White is a little bit better, maybe. Just because Plague White's kind of hard to block by a certain two drops, and it can attack into a lot of three drops as well, because there's like three toughness three drops. Whereas Rakdos Trump Trumpeter gets kind of blanked. Okay. So how do we want to build this? So this is a card that we cut already. Don't think we want Tin Street Dodger. Don't really think we want Consign to the Pit. The thing is, when you have a lot of Burning Tree Vandals, expensive cards get much worse. So this is like this. So we're going to make two cuts. This group creature separately. I like all those removal effects. I like all my non-creature spells. So I'm just going to cut two creatures here. I like having a flyer, especially because I can buy it back with dead rebels if need be. I'm going to cut one Rakdos Trumpeter. I think this is a decent, this is the right number of two drops. Though. Six two drops is pretty much where you want to be a lot of the time. And I have two removal spells that I can cast on turn two as well. And then maybe I'll cut one Rakdos Rouse. This is a 3-drop, but it can be played alongside a 2-drop. Yeah, one Rouse about probably a little bit. Probably be fine. 
I just kind of am, I'm just going to cut a burning tree vandal. Is that too crazy? I, I'm just kind of picturing a scenario where I like attack with my roustabout, get in for a damage, bring back it back with dead rebels, play it again, and like get in for like six damage like that. Maybe that's a little bit ambitious. Maybe I just cut Undercity Scavenger for another three drop. And then side this card in. Hmm. Huh, huh, huh. Kind of like main decking this card. It works decently with the Dead Rebels. Pretty well with the Dead Rebels. I don't think I can run 15 lands. I think that's a little bit ambitious. I like this card. Hmm. Maybe I'll just cut another Rakdos Trumpeter. I think I have to cut one of the three drops, though. I like Burning Tree Vandal. I guess I'll cut one Rouse about. Sort by color. So I have basically equal, and I'm running 16 lands, so I'm just going to run 7-7. Seven, seven. Now one less check, last check to make sure I'm not missing anything. I'm choosing not to run the Rouse about. Choosing not to run the Doom Sign. I have like decent sideboard options, too. These are like all pretty playable cards. I don't think the Tin Street's very good, but I mean, I'm not playing it, so. Um, yep, I think this is going to be the build. Yep, I uh, hope you enjoyed the drafting portion, and I hope you'll stay with me for the matches. Hello, 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 and welcome to round one. We have an excellent hand. We are going to keep it. Uh, we did lose the die roll, which is a little bit unfortunate. This hand would have been very hard to beat on the play, I think, but we can uh, find hope. And Plague White, Plague White is pretty nice against Orzhov because it can't be blocked by the little tokens. And there's our second copy. Let's go. Would Skewer the Critics be better as a hacker bat? I'm going to think that every time I draw one of the cards, I'm just going to like do a little like mental calculation. It's kind of cool that I ended up with one of both. Okay. Plague White. Definitely better to play my creature here. I, can, I do want to Scorch Mark this, uh, but I can potentially do something like Scorch Mark this, attack with Plague White, he can't block, and then I skewer the Critics, his other creature, or something like that. Okay. Just going to play my... Next turn, I'm going to go Scorch Mark plus another Plague Right. So I guess I'll just play Roustabout. I don't need to discard any cards as of right now. I would hopefully draw a Mountain soon, but that's not a huge deal. That's an interesting draw. Scorch Mark this guy. So I can attack with both. This is exactly where I want to be. I can buy back my creatures. Burning Tree Vandal can even help me discard creatures. Okay. I'm probably just going to kill that creature. Ooh, that was a really good draw. Actually, it doesn't even really matter. I'm just going to uh, skewer this. Not going to give him a chance to trade. He is stuck on lands. That's why this aggressive aggression is really working out for me. And uh, I just want to kill him before he can get like too stabilized. Uh, okay. I'll pay two. Yeah, I'll pay two. I don't want to give him a chance to play like a really powerful six drop or something. Okay, so if I play Burning Tree Vandal, then that's three, five, seven damage guaranteed. <sighs> but he can then eat the Burning Tree Vandal, so I think I'm just going to attack and then play the Burning Tree Vandal without haste. This might force him to chump with the Pegasus. And he concedes. So we saw a couple of two drops from him. 
but that's why Plague White is a really nice 2-drop. Um, the Rakdos Trumpeter would have gotten in for damage too, but the Plague White was getting in for 2 damage, whereas the Trumpeter would have gotten in for 1. So Tin Street Dodger is not going to be good against him because he has a lot of early plays. Trumpeter is like very medium. He has a 2-2. Two, two. The Roustabout looked really good. So that's a card that I might want more of. Robopelt Recluse, probably worse against Orzhov because they have a lot of removal, so more expensive threats are not what I want. So Roustabout is a card to consider for sure. Um, don't really want expensive removal because he didn't have play like an expensive creature that game, but he probably has some. I mean, he only didn't really get his lands that he needed. So these are the cards I'm considering pretty much every time, these four. Whether I want more like Roustabout type stuff, I mean, probably not. My three drops are pretty well distributed. I can probably cut a Dead Revels. Though he might just have a lot of removal. I'm going to cut... I think he's probably going to have a better late game than me, so I'm going to cut a Dead Revels for a Roustabout. Is that too... Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to try out the Dead Revels again. I haven't... I think it could be fine in like a grindier matchup. Okay, so we are going to have to mulligan. This is a keeper. Put that in the bottom. We just want to swamp so we can go two drop on turn two. This card's going to be pretty effective. Ooh, he's splashing blue. Why, Mountain? Why hath ye forsaken me? Ooh, Senate Guild Mage. That's a good card. Come on, Swamp. You know what they say. Better lucky than good any day. I mean, I did build a pretty consistent mana base, so that's a good thing. So this plus uh, Carnage is going to be able to really chip away at his hand. Of course he has Dovin Ban. Why wouldn't he have Dovin? That's really fun. Okay, so I can ping the Planeswalker if he starts to... Uh, this does to target opponent. Ugh. Plus some plus counter, so it can't just be eaten by one Thopter. I can just start chipping away at his hand, though, with this guy. So he just plus twos. That's fine. The fact that this can just directly damage him is really nice for me. Smothering Tithe, okay, sure. I'll let him make some treasure. He doesn't have any cards in hand. Oh my god, that was a disgusting. Oh no, I can't cast it. No! Oh, that would have been so disgusting. Oh, okay. Make your treasure, monster. Oh, that would have been so good. I would have killed that. I would have killed Dovin Ban. Never lucky, I guess. Huh. So this does one damage to target creature or planeswalker and one damage to that permanence controller. So could do that and then ping it and then hmm. I think I'm just going to because this can do two damage to a planeswalker as well. Attack Dovin. And then I think I'm going to also attack Dovin with this guy. Because I'm gonna use this for the discard mode. And if he trades here, then I can put Dovin down to one and kill it. And I can potentially draw a Swamp here. Okay, so not as lucky. Okay. And then let's play the Burning Tree Vandal. Plus one, plus one counter. Okay, so he's going to have a lot of mana this turn, and black mana, which he didn't have last turn. So Smothering Tithe, I guess, doing fixing? But if he minuses Dovin, then I can snipe it with this Carnival. And maybe Carnage is able to hit him too. I really don't know, that's why I didn't try to cast it, because I don't want to... 
that's like a rules knowledge thing. I'm not sure if it can hit. I don't know what it means by opponent. I don't think planeswalkers count as opponents. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So. Sure, I don't really care. It can go up to four. Do I want to kill this and then try to snipe the Dovin thing? I think I'm gonna try and save this part. I think that's gonna be more effective for me in the long run. Okay, no. So that's really what I wanted. That was the exact type of draw I wanted. Target opponent. Target Planeswalker. So I think I'm going to do the Planeswalker, let him trade with my Colt Guild Mage. Don't really want the Rakdos Trumpeter. So hopefully he doesn't have a way to stop this. Wow. He's letting me keep this guy. Bold choice opponent. And now he can like draw some cards with his Azorius Locket, but hopefully I can snag two cards with this Carnage and be in really great shape. Okay, perfect. Everything's working the way I want it to. Grasping Thrill, okay. So he's gonna try and get me in the air. That's his plan. No, I'm not going to pay two. Yeah, I could pay two. And then just make him discard his last card. And he's got me at five a turn. I'm doing four a turn. But I can kill one of those guys. No, I just don't care about the treasure, though. Okay. So he kind of baited me there. But if he trades here, I'm fine with that. Okay, that works nicely. I, I really like trading here because then I can maybe get that card back. And uh, yeah. So I'm gonna be taking two here, but I could potentially just kill this thing. I hope he draws some cards here. Oh, please no. Please don't have a sick rip. Oh. Well, now I can't win. Wow, that was a uh, a fine top deck, shall we say. Yeah, that was... um. Extremely unfortunate. Yeah, we can't win this game. Oh my god. Because he can just make 1-1s. One <sighs> Jesus. Um, That was unfortunate and a little bit unlucky. Um, so Rakdos Trumpeter hits Dovin pretty well. Um... I kind of like Rakdos Roust about to hit Dovin as well. I'm going to cut a Dead Rebels because I just think I need to be a little bit faster. Yeah, let's try it like this. That was just an awkward game. If we'd been able to cast the Rakdos Firewheeler on curve, we would have won that. 
And now we're on the play for the first time. We have a great hand. Like, it doesn't even have to have great cards here. We just have to have a curve out, which is good. So I'm going to start off with Trumpeter into Scorch Mark, maybe. So he's probably like a base Azorius deck. That's why that other game was really rough for him. And then we'll play our Carry on Imp on turn four, and then we'll manage to get this thing going. He could like summary dismissal that I wouldn't really care. So hopefully he plays a creature that we can scorch mark. Okay. So he's mana screwed. I'm glad we have the card that can sacrifice things in our deck. Flying blind again. Jeez. That's annoying. And I'm going to play this land um, so I can hold up Scorch Mark. Hopefully he runs out of things to play and he... Uh... Hey! Heck yeah. Hopefully we can draw this carry on Scorcher thing. Roust about. Plague White, attack, yes, we will discard it. Since we're probably going to get multiple attacks out of it, um, I like to discard the card that may look good, because at, this, at the time, current time, making him discard two is basically irrelevant. But if we can draw like our Fire Wheeler, that'd be really good. Or just more creatures to put the pressure on him. Also gets us through dead draws in our deck faster, because we're not casting this card anytime soon, I don't think. Okay, so that card can't even block our stuff. Yes, discard Rakdos Guildgate. Oh, that's an incredible draw. So do we want to just shoot the horse? Probably not. Probably doesn't matter right now. We'll just save it. Because we'll have to jump with the horse and we could just shoot face next turn. Ooh, it's a tap land. That's not what you want to see, opponent. Yes, discard dead rebels. So that was a uh, bit of a massacre because there was the one game where our opponent played like some super strong bombs and then the other games they had mana problems. But that's one of the things about playing um, Man Hungry decks. Oh my god, my opponent drew up to 14 cards, so uh, they're a little bit unhappy. But uh, maybe I managed to get the W and I hope you'll stay with me for round two. Hello, 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 and welcome to round two. Uh, we did lose the die roll again and this is going to be a mulligan. Uh, one quick change I did make to the deck is I cut a Dead Revels for another Roustabout, just because I wanted to add more creatures. We're going to keep this hand. Hopefully hit a Swamp soon, but we do have a 2-drop to play in red. And it's not the worst hand I've ever seen. Would be better if it had some strong cards. Definitely putting that on the bottom. We have four Roustabouts, so no pressure to keep them on top. Okay, Benthic Biomancer. That's a quite a strong... Um, one drop, because you usually don't have anything to do on turn one anyway. So on turn two, you just end up with a two, two, but you got a loot out of the deal, so that's pretty nice. And then if you have any other ways to put counters on it, pretty effective. But no, by no means a broken card. And Burning Tree Vandal could help us with our mana problems. All we need is one more land. Hoping not to have to scorch mark this, because it does get answered pretty handily by Immolation Shaman. 
It'd be funny if our opponent waited and then we managed to ping them with our Immolation Shaman. But it seems unlikely because if they're going to use it, they'll just use it to get in that extra damage. And there is the adapt that we expected. Playing against Azorius. Probably has some other lands in hand if he's getting rid of a land. Definitely going to play the creature first. Ooh, it's a foil. Hopefully we can hit a land to play this Burning Tree Vandal on three. And hopefully that land is a swamp. Unfortunately, things do not always go according to plan here. I think we are going to just pass. Scorch marking a 2-2 that we are already bl blanking is not a super efficient play. Also, we want to find time to draw our, draw our uh, lands. On his end step. Um, I think we will go for it on his end step. Just get rid of it. Okay, that's a land that we needed. Just so we were using our mana efficiently, that's why we played Scorch Mark. Because here we're not going to have time to use it. Summary Judgment, maybe? Fairy Duelist. Yeah, not a fan of Fairy Duelist, not going to lie. Uh, I'm glad I didn't play Burning Tree Vandal with Haste. But I just think it's incorrect to play B Burning Tree Vandal with Haste there. Fairy Duelist is a card that is a 2-drop that is bad on turn 2, which is why I'm not a fan of it. I think that's just a good mark to have. Your 2-drop needs to be at least playable on turn 2. So, like, this guy, he's a 1-3 on turn 2, but late, he can, like, threaten some pings, and late in the game, he's, a, like, an actual threat. Hmm. Okay. Hopefully he doesn't have another Fairy Duelist, but we do really need to get some uh, action. So we're going to discard the Rakdos Trumpeter. I think it's our worst uh, card in this hand. And then, uh, yeah. Land, and we shall play a set of Plague Whites, I think. I think that'll be the most effective. Because these can attack through a lot of the cards that he would play to stabilize. And then we can like play the carry on imp next turn. We can threaten to activate this thing next turn if we draw a land. Hello, Kindling. I don't know if we would want to, though, because of the Burning Tree Vandal, but I like just adding the most power to the board that we can. Undercity Scavenger is actually really good against Azorius. Gateway Sneak. Okay, yeah, not worried about that one. Okie doke. Let's just attack with everything. We are actually going to discard the Roustabout because we have other good cards in our deck that we could be drawing towards. Definitely happy to make this trade. Gateway Sneak is a card that is annoying to deal with. And now I can gain two life from my carry-on imp. And I don't even mind if I draw a land, because it means I can activate my Immolation Shaman. Oh, I thought it was only opponent's graveyard. Interesting. Gaining that two life feels good. There is the second white mana. Chillbringer, okay. Still can't effectively block my Plague Whites, so he's tapping one down, that makes sense. But if I draw a land, I can still get in for six. I'm still just going to try and save this Undercity Scavenger. Okay, that was a very effective draw. So I'm going to attack like this. I could have maybe played the Burning Tree Vandal pre-combat, but I just want to play it as a 3-2 so it can get through on its own. But Storm Strike is going to be nice. Trading one mana for his five drop.
Okay, that's a fine trade for me. And here I'm going to do something a little bit next level. Um, this isn't something that I would, uh, like, this isn't something that you want to get too fancy with, but I'm actually going to tap out of red mana because Storm Strike is not a card I want to be playing on defense against any card Azorius could have because I can't block the Fairy Duelist anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to tap out of red mana so my opponent doesn't think, oh, he has Storm Strike. Uh, that's just... If I was playing against any deck where it could be relevant in any way, like if he could have a fight spell that I might want to use Storm Strike to like make my guys like extra like trade or something, I would not do that. But in this specific case, I think it could be good. And here, our plan comes to fruition. Putting that on the bottom for sure. Play the guild gate so we can activate the Immolation Shaman next turn. And uh, I still do want to keep this card because I kind of want to play around. Uh... Oh my gosh. Azoria Skyguard. Hmm. Do, 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 do. So if I attack with everything, this is four. Or this is three. This is four. You'll block this. This is. We'll wait for him to block and then just eat one of his blockers, maybe. Getting in for three damage is really good. Especially because it has Menace, so maybe at next turn I could like Alpha Strike him. Roust about is good in this scenario because it doesn't matter if it gets blocked. Keep in mind, any of my removal spells kill this pretty much. I want to play Roust about in a turn where I can do something else as well. Here. Law Mage is binding. Okay. So I made it so that he had to use that spell, and now I can use my Undercity Scavenger. We've been saving it for a while. But it was all worth it. I should have played my land there. That was a mistake. Because now I can't play both these cards on the same turn. Which could definitely easily be relevant here. I'm feeling like I'm in good shape. We have the same number of cards in hand. I have a big 5-5 five, five Scry 2 coming up with very little downside. Like, he could have activated abilities. I have a pretty big, big board. He's at 5. Any removal spell kills this and solves all my problems. Okay. Okay. That's a good draw. Definitely going to play my land. Ooh, that's a really good one. Um, I could get back that. I could get back a roustabout. That's the roustabout thing I was talking about, though. If the roustabout is going to add up. I can get back this guy. I'm not going to get quenched here. I'm just going to play this. Sack that guy. 
bottom, bottom. I'm looking for my more powerful spells. Next turn, my Dead Revels can be really effective. My 1-3 in the air does block all of his Thopters, which is cru crucial. But next turn, I can get back uh, Roustabout and Shaman. Play Shaman. Sure. Okay, I still have a lot of time. This also makes it difficult for him to want to ping. As soon as I find a removal spell, which I have a lot of, I'll be in good shape. And next turn, I'll just play double roustabout. Haha, -ha, got him. Bet you didn't expect that, opponent. He trades one damage for one damage if he attacks with all those three, yeah. I think this might be a case where um, it's not even correct to do that. But we'll see, I guess. Because now he only has three blockers. I'm willing to trade this off for a flyer here, and this guy can't really be blocked by his creatures. And if he does want to block with this guy on this, then it means that he can't block my Plague White, which means I'll get in for damage, which means that I could potentially play Hacrobat and something else this turn. Attack with this, then I can get in for... Yeah, I don't want to be spending my mana on that, so I'll just leave it back. Definitely going to ditch the Trumpeter. Another Roustabout. So maybe it'll just be better to go double roused about here. We'll find out, I guess. Double Roustabout is actually really scary for him because he can't actually deal with them. He's dealing like four to me a turn. Less if he wants to leave back actual blockers, but my Roustabouts are going to deal one to him guaranteed. And this thing does the one to him basically guaranteed if he wants to have double blocks. Okay, so he's keeping up some pressure because he realizes that as soon as I find a removal spell, he just loses. Or maybe he has another one, which would be really bad. Okay, that's actually really bad for me, too. Or relatively bad. Huh. So I can make this into a 3-6. This puts him to 5. Okay. We're not under any real threat of dying next turn. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then next turn we can just make our alpha. Puts him to a virtual four if he blocks all three of these. This guy can get that touch or plus two plus minus two, which is really nice. This guy's hard to block. This guy can pump himself. Because this guy, if this guy hits and my roustabouts hit, yeah, he can't even attack. Oh, there we go. We're just going to go for this. Because um, we went on the spot if it works. Heck yeah. Do we win on the spot? Ugh. I, want, I need to be able to pump this guy to win on the spot, so I'm just going to cast this guy and sacrifice my Plague White, because Plague White doesn't do anything against this board, really. And also the Scry 2 is really nice. Definitely bottoming both of those. Okay, so next turn I can Alpha and win. Which means I should have waited on the Grotesque Demise. But I don't really want to give him another draw step to find a counter for it. But I need to be able to pump this guy to win. Okay. Okay. I think I just might have him dead on board. So I pump this guy up. It becomes four power. That means he has to block. He has to double block this. If he double blocks it with his two smallest guys, he blocks here, blocks here. And then he blocks here, here, here. He dies. If he doesn't block a roustabout, though, he's taking three. Hmm. So basically, he's at, a vert he's at four life here. That's how we treat this. But if he doesn't block a roustabout, he goes to five life. So if he doesn't block a roustabout, he goes to five life, but then goes down to two life. So the roustabout plus any of my other creatures is lethal. Hackerbat trades with any of his guys. So if he goes like this, block, block. I eat both of the guys that block it, too, which is really nice. And then he would go block, and I attack with everything. Hmm. I, I, can't, I don't know why this math is so tricky. I mean, it is some tricky math, because if he doesn't block a roustabout, he does not have actually four. But he has to block the Immolation Shaman, because Immolation Shaman's four damage, and then he's dead no matter what to roustabouts. So let's just assume he goes block, and then he blocks with like the Senate Courier, so his guys don't die. Or he keeps it going. So those two guys out of the equation. He has to block this guy. He has three blockers. I have five attackers. This guy has three power. So I have this guy he'll have to let through, because he has to let through at least one. He, has to, he actually has to let through two blockers. Two guys. Yeah, I mean, he's dead. As long as I remember to pump this guy before combat. And I left up a red mana so that this guy could pump his power. See, I knew it. The roustabouts are good in multiples. I said this during the draft. It's just like... Because he would be at 7 life. If these were just normal 3 twos, then uh, it wouldn't be as good. Okay. 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 And this guy can pump itself. To be fair, this card versus the uh, card that does 3 damage. The 3 damage would have been better in this case because I would have been able to kill this thing sooner. Where is it? Oh, it's exiled. This guy sooner. It's like the, the long period of thinking before just sending it with everything. Got him. Boom. I knew this. See, the roustabouts plus shaman plan. 
roused about shamaning here. Okay, so we know a lot about his deck. We've seen over half of it. He has a bring to trial. He has arresters. He's got a law mages. He's got a couple of chill bringers. So if we had the card that like killed a flyer and did one damage, he's got this guy, which we really need to be able to kill. Gatebringer, Biomancer. And then a bunch of like dirtly dudes. Lumbering guy's kind of scary, I guess. So we do want Consign to the Pit. We do want Dead Revels. Don't really want Rakdos Trumpeter. Flames is a decent option. Robopelt Recluse seems decent. I just don't think Rakdos is going to do work in this matchup. He's going to have too many blockers. So we're just going to cut both the Rakdoses. Plague White was great. So I do want to add these more expensive cards, I think. These are the cards that I'm adding right now. Maybe Flames is still bad, but... Seems important to have as much removal for that for his guys as I can. I'm, gonna, I'm still not going to run Flames. I'm going to run the Consign to the Pit, though. Royal Pelt Recluse probably not super important. Don't need the Burning Tree. So I'm just basically adding a Dead Revels. And... Uh, you know, I'm not even, I'm not going to add a Dead Rebels. I'm just going to add the Flames. I just want to have ways to kill that 6 drop. Because now I have 1, 2, 3, 4 ways to kill it. And that should be enough. But I'm I'm getting rid of a couple 2 drops to facilitate a better ways to kill his like really powerful card at the end. So I don't think Dead Rebels is necessarily what I want. But I do think I still want the carry on him. I think, I mean, the, the Undercity Scavenger, because he does have that enchantment that I can kind of get a little bit of value on. Overall, though, I was pretty happy with how the deck played out. The roustabouts definitely were clutch. I'm glad none of them was a burning tree vandal. <laughs> Immolation Shaman did good work. Dead Revels gets, like, running a second copy gets sketchy when you only have 15 creatures. Especially when Undercity Scavenger is not all that great. Oh my gosh, this hand is gorgeous. What a hand. It's funny that he uh, lost the game to exact damage and he had that one turn where he like pumped his, gave his guy vigilance. No Benthic Biomancer turn one. Let's go. Here, I think we're going to lead with the Cold Guild Mage. Actually, we're gonna go with the Immolation because I'd rather have the Immolation guy. Eh. Colt's probably fine to get countered. They're both good. But this does more damage if he doesn't have a blocker. I'm just assuming he might have Quench or something. And he doesn't. We're going to try to get the Burning Tree Vandal down as soon as we can as well. Because that way we can start getting rid of these extra swamps. Slash Forests. So let's hit him for two. Okay, Fairy Duelist. Once again, glad I'm not playing this with haste. Heck yeah, things are going well. He's stuck on lands. This is one of the decks that's really good at punishing decks that stumble, so. I don't really want to be activating the discard ability at this point. Just want to be getting through max damage. Hopefully he doesn't have another Fairy Duelist. That's really unfortunate. Gonna get rid of an extra mountain. Okay. Yep. I'm not gonna play around like double fairy duelist. I'm just gonna assume he's mana screwed. The only way to play around it would be by not attacking at all, which just lets him get back in the game. Let me eat my actually. 
yeah, I'll eat it. The gaining of life could be relevant. And that's not really the card I want to get back with my uh, effect. If he has a third fairy duelist, I swear, oh my gosh. That's actually kind of annoying. Nobody plays around the triple fairy duelist. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just getting destroyed by triple fairy duelist here. Yikes. This guy can at least attack. But I think I'm just going to start making him discard cards. Though he's going to start having to discard to hand size. Watch him have like slime bind or something. No. <laughs> Why? What the heck is this guy? This guy's a madman. Okay. Colt Guild Mage is just going to start picking him apart. Actually, he's going to have to discard to hand size. That's why I don't want to use the Colt Guild Mage for that. I'm just going to ping him with Colt Guild Mage. When he's discarding to hand size, that's not when you want to use the Colt Guild Mage. The fact that I'm getting so wrecked by Fairy Duelist is actually unreal. And then I can ping him. Another Roustabout doesn't really do anything. Wow. I, I, I feel kind of bad for my opponent because he's been like wrecking me without even having lands to cast white spells. He even cast a draw spell. He's like 15 cards into his deck and only has two lands. And his lands don't, don't even make both colors, so he couldn't like cast his Pegasus and stuff. Oh, there's a land. Nice, nice work about it. Okay. This also does two damage, keep that in mind. And this does one damage. Oh, that's another bit of damage. So this is... Three damage, puts him to six. One damage, puts him to seven. One damage, puts him to six. Okay, minorly annoying. Gives me a turn to cast all my spells though. Okay, so I have five, six, seven, eight. So I'm definitely casting this guy again. He's probably got some chill bringers in his hand. So let's just go for this now. Get in the damage. Uh, 
oh my gosh, he just has every single answer he could ever need. <laughs> but if he does, if he takes the damage from the roustabout, he just dies. So, oh, he died. He goes to three anyway, so he's dead to this thing. Wow, he had like for a guy. He, I mean, he didn't have any lands, so like, but like, if he'd drawn lands, I mean, I guess he might not have had all of the fairy duelists if he'd had actual lands. But I expect he's going to play Chillbringer here, and then I'll just carnage him out. Yeah. That's the thing about the incremental damage. Is this guy did like a couple damage, this guy did a damage, this guy did a bunch of damage, and then this thing just does three damage to end the game. I think I would have been more aggressive than that if I was him, because... I don't know what his long game plan for beating this guy is anyway. This is Carnage? Yeah. Wait, what, why is it waiting for him to discard? He's dead. He's at zero life, and it's, he's like, what the heck? <laughs> No! Okay, yeah, there we go. GG's. Oh my goodness, we're in the finals once more. Hopefully you stick with me for the finals to see if we can get there with this sweet deck. And, uh, yeah. Hope you stay with me. Hello, and welcome to the finals. Uh, we won the die roll for the first time, so that's a good sign. Uh, we did make one change to the deck. We cut a Rakdos Trumpeter for a Consigned to the Pit. Overall, just not a fan of the Trumpeter, but uh, Consigned to the Pit can be nice. We are going to keep this hand. We do need to hit a couple lands, but we have our boy, the Fire Wheeler, and uh, we're relatively likely to hit a third land. So overall, a pretty solid, solid opener. Ooh. The Rakdos Mirror, perhaps? I don't think Grohl really usually plays that card. Trumpeter shuts down the Tin Street Dodger nicely. Unless he's going to activate it, which I'm pretty happy with. No, it is Grohl. A very aggressive Grohl variant. Okay. Attack. We're just attacking because we already have a blocker for his guy anyway, and we want to try and get ahead of him on life so the spear spear doesn't do anything to us. And here we get to hold up death touch, which is nice. And he could have a fight spell because now if he goes for plus two plus two fight, we get to hold up death touch. Hopefully we draw a mountain, nat mountain. Play this fire wheeler on curve, kill a spear spewer. I mean, you don't even know. I don't even know if we kill Spear Spear. We'd probably kill something else. Ever wonder why you never see an old Rakdos cultist? Probably because they do crazy stuff like this. What the heck is he even doing? He's just like jumping between rings of fire. Yeah. That would be an explanation that is reasonable. Okie doke. So now we can kill Sorrowform Hybrid if we hit a land. So that would be awesome. Okay, 10 Street Dodger is unblockable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me the old mountain deck, and I will make it worth it for you. If I draw a swamp, it's not the end of the world, but I do really want to hit a land here. Like, I have spells to cast, but they're not as good as the ones I could be casting. Nat Mountain. Oh, that's a fine draw. Okay. We will take it. Not going to attack with this. He'll just double block it. I'd rather have a blocker for that thing. And we will play the roustabout. Fortunately, we can't get too much tempo because we don't have the... Um, like lands to get the good tempo from playing skewer for one mana, but we'll draw a mountain eventually, and then this guy will be great. Kill Sar form hybrid. Okay, he's spending mana on Tin Street Dodgers, so I'm not super worried. 
Goblin Gathering, okay. The terror that fills my veins is unrivaled. Land? Not a mountain. Maybe we can get a little bit of value from Grotesque Demise. Definitely going to put a counter on it. He hasn't played a creature worth using Grotesque Demise on. He's still using that Spear Spewer, which is really interesting because he's lower on life. Huh. Oh, goodness. So he went deep. That's actually kind of sweet. Luckily, I have good blockers for it. Mounted. You taunt me, deck. You taunt me. I also messed up by playing the swamp. Definitely should not have done that. Huh. He probably has active aggression to give all his guys plus two plus oh. We're going to get rid of this Undercity Scavenger. Oh, that's really bad for me. That's not good news. And then we are going to use Skewer the Critics on this thing. Then hold up Grotesque Demise. Because that enables us to barely live if he has active aggression. Actually, that's not even true. No, yeah, it does. Three, six, nine, ten. I wonder what you could have. This is, yeah, we have to kill one of the goblins. So now if we draw a mountain, we win. Else, we're not dead, but mountain. You taunt me for the last time, deck. Ugh. Okay, I guess we still can win. block here. Wow, that was just wildly unfortunate. I think we lost this game, but that was mostly just like not drawing another mountain, which is really unfortunate because we have a lot of red sources. He probably has another act of aggression. Might mean burn bright, not act of aggression. What am I even saying? I've been saying act of aggression this entire time. Yeah. Really unlucky there. Um, I'm really not worried about beating this guy though. We definitely don't want dead rebels. We just want creatures that affect the board. We'll bring in our. Other Rakdos Trumpeter. I don't like that. Actually, that seems effective. Wow, that was just really unlucky. We would have won that game if we'd hit our mountain at any point. <sighs> Happens. Our opponents got mana screwed in our other matches, so it's only fair. Maybe we don't want this guy because he can active treason it. 
we were also like just off. Like if we'd gotten him one life lower, we would have been able to haste our burning tree vandal to get him. Maybe I want another Rakdos Trumpeter. I think I have enough to drop though. Yeah, that was unfortunate. I feel like we were heavily favored to win that game. We had two, three, four, five, six, seven outs on that last turn. Actually, more than seven. If we had another mountain, we also could have pumped our Hacker Bat a couple times, which would have been relevant. I mean, you can't change the things though, so. No use worrying. I think Roll Pelt Recluse is bad just because we know he has active treason. He's kind of just an all out aggro deck. I think the Burn Bright deck can work, but you have to draw both pieces, and Burn Bright by itself is pretty bad. He might go for a more big strategy post board. That could be an effective method. But all we cut was a Dead Rebels for a consign to the pit, so it's not like a super big deal either way. I mean, we cut Dead Rebels for a Rakdos Trumpeter. We would like to play first. We will keep this hand. That's why he was using his uh, Spear Spear every turn, I guess. Now we have all of our colors. There's a Torch Fiend. We'll probably Scorch Mark that. Will we Scorch Mark that? Yeah. I'm gonna trade with our ra ra Roust about otherwise. Feral Maka, sure. I guess we could have uh, carnivaled it, but I kind of want to carnage him because he already mulliganed. Sure, we'll take two. Oh, this is going to be disgusting. So we can hold up Death Touch, we can block the Feral Maka. Whew, things are looking good. Definitely blocking. It is a 2-3 after all. And it can gain Death Touch. They all want to see me fail. That's funny. That is unfortunate. Yeah, he only has two cards left in his hand. Not the end of the world. We're just gonna play this as a 3-3. Three, three. We don't wanna get rid of too many creatures. Sure. So I feel very favored here. I have probably better top end a little bit because he has a lot of like very medium cards in his deck that are like built for all out aggression. I'm ahead in the damage race. 
Okay, that's a little bit annoying. Come on, spells. That's not what I like to see. Ugh. Yikes. Oh no. Jeez. Maybe I was supposed to use this to just make him discard his hand instead of uh, killing the 2 1. Could have been a mistake. It seemed like a strong tempo play at the time, but now I just need to draw spells and. Uh, that's a strong start. Now I can double block this thing. Oh my gosh, could you just draw a land once in your life? Oh my goodness. This guy is uh, drawing well, shall we say. Need to play it so I can pump my trumpeteer. If he just draws land, 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 and I draw spell, spell, spell. I mean, just look at all these jank. Oh my gosh, he's just playing a bunch of junk. Spell. That is a huge draw. But even if he draws lands now, he can just pump the airings. Hmm. I'm gonna start attacking with this guy. If I can trade him for a couple of his guys, I'll be pretty happy with that. He can't really threaten me unless he draws his uh, Burn Bright. So I want to kill him before that happens. Now he's doing the math because he do, drew Burn Bright. I have four blockers, so he can do 12 to me, plus however much trample this gets through. So he can probably kill me. We can't beat a Burn Bright, so I'm not going to block as if he has it. Unless, like, I could technically win on, like, the crackback. But. That seems unlikely. All out attack. No. Oh, it's just a Gruel Gilgate. Made me sweat for nothing. Okay, so next turn this thing's gonna be able to pump itself. I definitely play it so I can double pump this guy. He blocks it with this guy. And this. I'm fine with that, I think. This is five, six. I'll still have a big menace threat in the Rakdos Trumpeter that can double pump itself next turn. 
Yep. And he takes no damage from that. So he's going to be at five. Oh, right, I only killed one of his guys. Oh, he won't be at five, because I'll trade with his thing, but that's the, the, you get the point. That's a fine trade for me, because I have to hold up a lot more mana to activate mine. This guy's also a 3-2, my guy's a 1-3. I think this is the block I want to make. I take a decent chunk of damage here, but my 3-3 can still block the Feral Maka. And, uh... Yeah. Obviously, I need to draw some spells in a row here. That is a huge draw. Let's just attack with the Rakdos Trumpeter. And the flyer can just start flying in. While oh, my other guy holds back the ground. Yeah, it's another good draw. Because he's basically unblockable at this point. Now my opponent's starting to draw lands, which is great for me. He's getting to the point where even a burn bright won't save him because this is 12. And I'm at 13 exactly because of the life from carry on. And I'm going to hit him for four a turn. Active treason plus burn bright would get me, but. Can't beat everything. So what combat tricks do I know about? I know about the Storm Strike, the Scorch Mark is kind of a combat trick, Stony Strength, a couple Goblin Gatherings. I suspect my opponent is holding at least one land in their hand, though I could be wrong on that. If he alphas me, this is, oh dear. This last card is exactly burn bright. And, and I jump here, I go to one and I lose anyway. So he goes to three, and now he has to jump both. Boom, we got the win. Whew, that was a close game. Okay, okay, okay. I think we do want a Dead Revels, and I think we do want a, a uh, Rakdos Trumpeter. And I definitely don't want Robo Recluse. Ten Street Dodger is embarrassing here. Consigned to the Pit is also embarrassing, though it would have been decent in certain spots that game. 
because it was like 4-4, four, four, but I think these are the two cards that I definitely want. I want Rakdos. Maybe I already have two. I already have two Trumpeters. I just think I do want to add Rebels in case the game stalls like that. I'm going to cut a Burning Tree Vandal. This is like a I win button, but it's a very risky I win button because there's certain cards that like I have to have like very specific, like I have to have that guy in play or this guy in play having eaten something. I think I like it. So I think I cut a Rakdos Trumpeter for a... Oh, Kadoke. This is a mulligan. Just not enough action. This is a great hand, though. Bottom that. We just want to maximize our odds of playing this on turn four. No one drop is good news for us. Of course it's a swamp. No! Oh, that just pains me. Deep within my soul. I think I just want to play the Trumpeter. Because Trumpeter can just block this, and then I can save my Scorch Mark for something more problematic. I'm not going to block right now, though. I'll block next turn and Scorch Mark if he has a combat trick. Which could be really good. Goblins. Goblins everywhere. There is that mountain I was talking about. How does he want to attack? So it looks like he's got either the stony card or the other. Hmm. Gonna get it down. It looks like it's not a card that he combat trick he can use with these guys. Yeah, now I have my scorch mark for that guy. Beautiful. And I can start making him discard cards, force him to use his burn brights. Okay. I'm going to Grotesque Demise so I can also use Cult Guild Mage next turn or use the pump on this thing. I can pump this and also use a scorch mark. He discarded stony strength. Oh dear. That's bad. Oh, 
Probably gonna scorch mark a goblin. Oh, I'll scorch mark that. So I take four, 10, 14, I go to four. So now I can trade my Rakdos Fire Wheeler for this guy. Actually, I'd have to trade both, so I think I'll trade Roustabout and Rakdos Trumpeter for it. He's deciding whether to attack with all those other guys. If he does, I think I'll just chump this guy and eat three of those. He's got me low, but he doesn't really have any action. <sighs> that scorch mark was clutch. Hmm. So I think I want to block this guy and this guy. Okay. Okay, if I had another creature I could attack, but I don't think I can attack here. I'm dead if he ever draws Burn Bright. Come on, spell. That is a spell. Oh my god, he had it. Oh man, that's unfortunate. I thought he was just doing that because he could, and then I would die next turn, but... Oh, man. To lose the match because in game one you couldn't draw a mountain is unfortunate, but it happens, and, uh, well, he just uh, had a little bit better draw than me. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to get updates for whenever I post new content, uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you next time.